So I, I literally have no cool intros for you today because um, literally nothing has happened over the past month. So um, you guys gonna to make do with this boring ass intro. So yeah. Hello, my name is Hope Shijia Bi. Greetings, fellow members of the party. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the questions at, question at hand, um, name one example of unethical public relations and one example of unethical journalism. So for the public relations bit, it's pretty simple. Um, in 2015, the Bud Light PR team thought it would be a cool idea to um, actually put taglines at the bottom of the beer. And it's, well, it's pretty cool, you know, you have a like, different saying and everything, just kind of like how Vitamin Water has like a little story at the back, at the back of the labels. So this whole fiasco started when someone found a tagline that says, the perfect beer for removing no from your vocabulary for the night. Hashtag up for whatever. And obviously when you put alcohol and for removing no from your vocabulary and the night and you just add those up together, obviously it will just sum up into um, non-consensual sex. Or oh, basically that's how most people would perceive the message to be. And the thing is it raises a lot a lot of alarms because in at the first in the first place, why is a company putting out such taglines and second thing is does your company actually support rape uh, and, the, and, the other th and the third thing will be whether your company actually encourages rape through the usage of their product and obviously it will just be mind blowing just because it's not mind blowing actually it's just really bad PR because you wouldn't want your company to be associated with such dark acts and that's the pretty that's pretty much a PR bit the next one will be the journalism bit and this one's a bit more complicated, okay? Okay, so in on the 8th anniversary of 9-11, of um, the US Coast Guard actually performed a training exercise which involved a phantom threat, or basically just, just a fake terrorist, fake terrorist attack well, on the day itself, which is, um, I don't know why would they do that. But the thing is, usually when they do these attacks, uh, these attacks they will usually announce it on all radio frequencies so that every major news, every new major news agency will obviously pick when, ah, will obviously pick up on this and would know what's going on. But for that particular year, they actually slipped up quite a bit because the UN Coast Guard, as part of their of their practice, cut off all radio contact with all news agencies. And when gunshots were fired, the CNN, <laughs> yeah, CNN, CNN actually one of the CNN reporters actually like went up just went ahead with the story and just said like oh their gun their guns were being gunfired and because there were no reports coming from the coast guards because obviously it was part of their uh, training exercise since there were no there was no confirmation from them that it was an exercise they actually ran the story and just said like there is a terrorist attack going on at the exact time President Obama was reading out the names of the people that died in 9-11 and obviously that's just horrible because like wait on one second Yeah, and this is horrible because like flights were delayed just because there was a terrorist attack in that area, and it was in the and it was near the Pentagon. That's even, that's the worst part because the Pentagon obviously was was one of the main targets, and basically it was hit by a plane as well. So flights were delayed. The FBI the FBI was called in, and the worst part is that I mean it wasn't it was it was totally the Coast Guard's fault. But at the same time, it was a major slip up by the CNN because the thing is, they just ran it without even bother bothered to check on it before we, uh, before they bothered to check on other sources and um, and basically just check and just follow so with her, um, and just confirm that whatever hap whatever's happening is really happening. Like a, like an actual terror threat is in progress. So the thing is, this is horrible because if. Because uh, in journalism, the one, one of the quotes is um, to seek the truth and report it. But the thing is, they didn't seek the truth, and but they did report it in the end, and it's just unethical. So in the end, at the end of the day, like when it comes to the PR side, I mean, just for me, just like you need to watch out, like how you're gonna play certain factors out, um, especially when it, when it, um, especially when it associates yourself with such 
duck fee, it's like um, like non consensual sex and rape and everything due to alcoholism and you know all that stuff. And then for the journalism side, it's just outright stupid that the things you just run a story just because you just because you want to do it. It's up here. So yeah. So that's pretty much those are pretty much my reactions I guess to all to the two stories I found out. But in all honesty, I just feel that I mean I, I I'm, I'm not a PR person, so I don't really bother with it. But on the journalism side, I mean like just because you're in a rush for a story and everything, obviously you want to get in front, of, you want to you want to get the story out before your competitors and all. But like ethics do matter, and the truth does matter the most because the thing is your your credibility as a reporter is at stake. Your company's credibility as a as a newspaper agency, as a deliverer of the news is at stake as well. So all so the thing is, you wouldn't want to comp you wouldn't want to want to jeopardize that at all. And I guess for the PR side, you wouldn't want to screw up your reputation as being a successful and creative PR company just because of a slip out like the butt like thing. So I guess that pretty much sums up whatever I have to say about the problem statement today. And yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you again in class in week nine, I guess. So yeah, and to all my classmates, I'll just see you tomorrow or something. Like,